is a huge vignette. This is 60 seconds of exposure. Wow! Hey everyone, John Reed here. Unscripted video today because SV Boney just sent me this 127 millimeter Mac telescope. I don't know anything about it, but we're gonna open the box, see what it's all about, and hopefully build a telescope rig with it. Let's see what's in these packages. Okay, this looks like a focal reducer. Interesting. All right, and there's a visual back that's just a pass-through. So it doesn't come with a finder scope. Okay, but we've got two finder scope bases here. So we've also got a dual speed focuser here. So this visual back is for 1.25 inch eyepieces. And then this visual back is if you've got a two inch diagonal. So we pull off the top here. We can see it is a Max Sutov telescope. So we've got a big, thick lens up at the front. I think this is F11 or F12. Your secondary mirror is behind here, primary mirror at the back. So it feels like it's a moderate weight, but it should still be okay for the AZ GTI right there. Gonna need to add a finder. Now, most of my finders are at the observatory, but we'll use what we got. Okay. So we've got this big guy. That's huge. Okay. Maybe we'll just use this small guy for now. All right, thank you. Not a great diagonal. I just pulled this off one of the Costco telescopes, but do the job for now. And an eyepiece. Boom. <laughs> this is a five millimeter eyepiece. This would be a lot of magnification for this telescope. Yeah, let's try the big eyepiece much less magnification. Okay, there we go. Okay, plugging in some power for this mount. So here we go, SynScan, connect, searching, it found it, I'm gonna allow the location. Okay, we're in. Let's see if it moves. Hey, all right. I pointed at something outside without freaking out the neighbors. It's been so long since I've used this mount for um, visual astronomy. Typically I have it mounted equatorially. Okay. I can see leaves. Here's the real test though. I need to go to LA in three days to do a space camp. So the question I have is does it fit in a suitcase? Picture, so. The biggest exit door I have ever seen. So on June 6, 2025, I traveled to Los Angeles, California as a space pro, presenting 30 times in just five days to over 1,200 students in the Oxnard School District. Every night we set up telescopes, and although it was near a full moon, we did our best to show the kids what they could see through some cool telescopes from their own backyard. This was just week one of a three-week space camp for the kids, and our week one team consisted of several individuals such as Kevin DeBruin, who was nominated for an Emmy during the week, Figo Riley, a literal Miss Universe and host of CBS's Mission Unstoppable, Basketball Hall of Famer and Olympic medalist Montez Blair, hip-hop artist Deja Williams, Menard from Menard's Wild World of Science, as well as science communicators such as Aaron Willock, Lee Giet from Passage Flight, Skylar from Space According to Skylar, Rachel from Lockheed Martin and Georgia Tech, and several others as well. All of these folks were able to test out the Mac 127 from SB Boney, and all were impressed by the views not only of the moon, but also Mars, which although appeared as a tiny red disc, was impressive nonetheless. And although one of the nights was cut a bit short by a rogue sprinkler system, a great time was had by all. Well, back to Canada to continue our test. Last night we used this Canon Rebel. It didn't work very well. This camera is like 20 years old, something like that. Uh, so tonight we're gonna switch this out for a better camera. 
Now the threads that came on the focal reducer on the SV Boney are too small for my ASI 2600, so we're gonna have to borrow another camera. And I know just the place to find it. All right, and here it is. So if I just unthread this from the T-adapter, that was a close call. I'm gonna set that down. Wow. Okay, so the Canon camera is off and put this over here. Let's just hope these threads are the same. So we've got the 294 MC Pro and we've got the focal reducer. Okay, and this should just thread in like this. Give it some power. Okay, now for the wiring, the ASI Air, and into the camera here. The mount, we've got one more slot in the ASI Air. So I'm gonna use this Aperture of Power Supply that was sent to me by High Point Scientific. Now, I actually made a whole video about this about a year ago, but it's been out of stock ever since. So I've got a video sitting unlisted on my channel for this. So hopefully it'll be back in stock soon and uh, we'll have another video. Mount power. For whatever reason, the mount requires the ASI Air to be connected to the Skywatcher AZ GTI slash SynScan Wi-Fi. And then generally I write the settings on the mount itself so I don't forget. So the baud rate is 115200. So if I type that in and try to connect, that should work. Let's see. And there we go. It's actually lighter than my refractor, so this is gonna go up. Looks good on that axis. Okay, and it needs to come forward. That, there we go. Now we need to focus, and that can be a bit of a challenge. What am I thinking? I can focus on the cell tower, the dreaded cell tower. Let's see how fast we can pull her line. Plate solve, and there we go. We are within four arc minutes. Get the fireworks. All right, I've got my battery powered flat panel here, and what we're gonna do is go into live, and then flats, 15 flats, and the exposure that gave us mid-range in the histogram it looked like 0.05. So let's see how we do here. I'm just gonna put the flat panel. Okay, without the black fly on there, I'm gonna put the flat panel here. Looks pretty good. And you really do need these flats for this telescope if you're doing imaging, because as you can see here, there's a huge vignette. Okay, there's 15. Now, we're gonna put the lens cap on, do some bias. Okay, so here's our first target. We're live stacking here, okay, and I've chosen M51 as the first target. So we took our darks, we took our flats, we took our biases. Uh, now this camera, a little bit old, we we're still getting some walking noise, which is one of the reasons I upgrade it to a new camera in the first place. Um, but we are dithering, so hopefully that will go away with increased exposure. I'm doing 60 second exposures, not three minutes primarily because one, it's super dark out, and two, I didn't want to spend all night doing darks. All right, so I decided to go over to a nebula just to see how the colors were. And so this is 60 seconds of exposure, or, or looks like we've got two stacked here, so two minutes of exposure on the Triffid Nebula. And you can see some of the blues and purples. And I've got the focus a little bit better dialed in here. That might be as good as we can get. Um, without a, a Batnoff mask. But anyway, looking pretty good so far. Uh, might let this go for a few more minutes and then just go to another target because I just really want to see, see what we can get here. All right, and just for fun, we're back to a galaxy. We've got M101 here and we've got about nine minutes of exposure. And so you can see how that's coming along, which is pretty nice. Again, we've got the focus dialed in. All 
I should have put on a dew heater. I think we're gonna call it. All right, so this is our last night with the telescope before I have to send it back. So I'm gonna do some visual observing from the backyard. I'm not gonna forget the dew strip that I forgot on our imaging night. And so hopefully we won't have any issues with dew. I'm gonna use SV Boney's SV230 zoom eyepiece and a bullseye finder. And that's pretty much all the accessories I'll be using. I think we've got enough stars for an alignment. We've set them out to the index markers. Okay, we've set the time. Let's do a two star line. Okay, now it's gonna choose some stars. Arcturus, perfect. And then we center it in the eyepiece. Okay, second star, Alcor. Wow. What a great view of Mizar and Alcor. Aligned. Add calibration star. I think we'll go for Vega if it lets us. Right overhead, all right. All right, there's Vega. Oh, nice and centered. All right, and Vega is aligned. Okay, let's go to Alberio. Alberio, here we go. Seems good enough. Do we get it on the first try? Wow, right in the center. That's some pretty significant separation. Yeah, take a look, Isaac. The one on the right is definitely brighter. So. Yeah, now look, we can twist and zoom in. Look at how far they separate it. I think we should go to M13 and see if it slews right there. And there it is, it's right in the middle. All right, just some final thoughts on the SP Boney 127 MAC telescope. As a scope for visual observation, it's really quite good. So I don't notice any distortions at all at any magnification, and that's using the zoom eyepiece here. The one challenge is just that the natural magnification is so high, the lowest magnification is around 60 times. And so if the finder and the telescope aren't perfectly aligned, it gets really, really, really difficult to find things even if the finder is pointed at them and so you really have to get that finder perfectly aligned to the telescope which was additionally challenging for me because I lost the allen wrench and I couldn't seem to find an allen wrench that actually fit my finder so that probably won't be a challenge for you but it was for me just on this trip and in the backyard here. I do think it really helps to have a good quality go-to mount. Uh, tonight was the best experience having it on this really sturdy mount it worked just really, really well. Using the AZ GTI manually without it skylined um, in California because the skies were too bright, it, it was really difficult to find targets. But here, this wasn't a problem at all. Uh, for astrophotography, you know, they did include that producer. What I couldn't find were specific instructions on the back focus, and I actually couldn't find some of my spacers. So we ended up being a little short, I think, on the back focus. And so I think if we had had the right back focus, that would have fixed is the um, aberrations near the edges. So the stars had, you know, what looked like coma around the edges and that may have gone away. I just don't have time to test that. But again, if you're doing astrophotography, you're probably looking at refractors in this price range and not a Max Sutab telescope. You know, this is really designed for amazing views of the moon and planets but with the added versatility of being able to find deep sky objects as well. I hope you enjoyed this video on SB Boney's new 127 Mac. Subscribe to learn to stargaze to make the most out of your stargazing experience. And remember, the future is looking up.